can relate to it that has big projects or big launches in their business. Uh, even something as simple as just if you're a real estate agent launching a new listing onto the market, or if you're a flipper, you know, putting putting that home that you've been working on for the last month and a half onto the market for the first time. Those are those are the same thing at whatever level you're at. You can go all the way up to the level of you know Richard Branson launching a new the seventeenth branch of Virgin whatever. There, it's all going to feel the same kind of when you're in it. Uh, I remember Rich Sheffern saying like everything in your business is either a system or a project. And meaning that the the stuff that you do repeatedly day in and day out is a system. And you can get that to the point where it kind of runs on autopilot. You can bring people in, you can train them, you can do all this stuff to kind of, you know, it just kind of moves into the back of your brain, right? It ends up becoming like autopilot in the business. But projects are never like that. They're always, they always take up the front of your brain. They're always on the front burner. They're always taking up your best mental and emotional horsepower. There's so many different things that have to come together all at once. So whatever level you're at, when you have a big project in your life, it's going to feel the same way. You're going to have the same stress. So yeah, I want to talk through some of the things that you are doing, uh, not, not in this project on the business side specifically, because that's going to be very specific to this launch, which we'll talk about in a second. But yeah, I wanted to get just a, first of all, how are you, how do you handle stress? What are some of the things that you do to rest, you know, relax, disengage, maybe give yourself some time to think and kind of be away from the stress of a project uh, and refuel and recharge? How do I handle stress? Not very well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Probably the same way a lot of people do, you know, stress just builds up and, you know, I don't really have an outlet and I don't really, you know, have somebody that I just go to when I'm stressed out and just voice what's bothering me. I mean, sometimes my team, I, I kind of riff with them just to kind of get out what's on my chest and things, hopefully hoping that somebody's going to pick a ball up and run with it, which they almost always do. Mm -hmm. But I think I, what I do and what probably a lot of the listeners to this do is they probably just let it build up and build up until it's like a raging monster inside of you that just is either going to rip you apart or you're going to find a way to tame that bitch. And uh, the way I do it is, you know, like once a week in the summertime, I make it mandatory. It's almost like therapeutic that I go to the skate park and I rip around the ball. I've been skating for most of my life, even at 45, where my bones break a little easier and things don't seem to heal as fast. <laughs> There's just something incredibly special about going really fast, right on the verge of being completely out of control, where you know disasters like just one micro <laughs> microsecond or one mm -hmm. inch away. But then when you don't wreck, you're just like, yeah. And then you just <laughs> keep pushing it and pushing it. And that's what I do. And, you know, I, I when I go, I usually go every Sunday morning, a bunch of the old guys are at the park ripping around and. There's just some days you just feel like a little kid and you just go there with this thing like, I think I'm going to hurt myself today. <laughs> and usually, I mean, I got so many, you know, just scars <laughs> and stuff just from different, though, that feeling. And yeah. when you, when you crash and you look and you got blood, you're just like, yes, mm -hmm. I know that's crazy for most of you to hear, but like, that is a stress relief for me. Yeah. So that's one, uh, summer months, you know, we're in Buffalo, New York here. So our summers are sacred because we only have literally a couple months of nice weather. Unlike you, you, you could do these things 12 months of the year, but, uh, <laughs> the, the neighborhood I live in has this, it's a private neighborhood has a surreal lake in the middle mm. of it. It's a, it's an old abandoned rock quarry. So when you mm. open your eyes in the water, you can see down 30, 40 feet and it's, it's pretty sick. Mm. So what I do is, and I started this about a year ago, I uh, used to go to the lake and try to swim across it. And for you know, time and time and time again, I'd get halfway and I'd be like, oh my gosh, I, I can't make it. I turn around. Then you get a little further and you're just like, I, I don't know. Because, hey, once you get out there, like, you know, you got to understand that no matter how much further you go, you got to go back. Yeah. So every time I just kept doing it and I just kept pushing it. And then finally one day I made it, made it to the other side. And, and then uh, ever since that day, I've made it a regular thing on a weekly basis, sometimes twice a week, sometimes three times a week. I just go there. Uh, no other purpose. I just dive in and I just swim across and swim back. And mm -hmm. that's that relieves stress. And I do the same thing in the wintertime uh, with snowboarding. You know, I just go up on the hill and I'm like a little kid again. So those are some of my stress reliefs, maybe completely different than yours, like we were talking <laughs> offline and some of the other people listening. But hey, to each their own. Yeah. Uh, if it's blood that makes your stress go away, great. If it's exhaustion from trying to make it across the big old lake, so be it. Yeah. Well, it's funny. It reminds me of, uh, I was reading a book the other day about um, uh, veterans coming back. And a lot of veterans find that like high, like high adrenaline 
activities are are what they need to handle stress and recharge. So a lot of them will still take their motorcycle out and and the and the only way that helps is they've got to be going 80 90 miles an hour like it's got to it's there, there's some part of the brain there that needs that, you know, especially if you're used to having that uh, that flush of adrenaline in the past, you need it now just to kind of flip off the the part of the mind that's stressing you out. Uh, so yeah, like you need that part where you, where it's, it's dangerous enough to where it takes all of your focus to, to get like, kind of get in, and get in that zone, get in that flow where you're on the edge, like you mentioned. So that makes sense. I mean, that's, that's, that's outside of my reality. Uh, I would say this, the equivalent for me would be going and, you know, jamming with uh, a band I've never played with and playing songs I barely know. And like, it just like that's when you step into that environment, now. yeah, it takes everything you've got, all of your mental focus to keep up. And you're focused on this mix of both mental and physical. And that's what takes your mind completely off of, uh, off of the thing that's stressing you. That was super cool. And I'm hoping the audience was listening to that. Like you just mentioned something that's critical. Uh, for everybody, uh, whether or not you like skateboarding or swimming across lakes or just watching the ocean, you know, and journaling what you just said, where you you go and you play music that you don't really know because it's challenging. Mm -hmm. That has absolutely been a piece of my life forever. You know, I speak across the country all the time. So mm -hmm. now I, you know, like next week, I speak twice just in that week. I've been on like a two week speaking and podcasting. And I think one of the things I've been doing and, you know, it takes a level of comfort and a level of uh, just practice to get to this point. But like when I go to a place to speak, I'm like creating a speech that I've never done before. And it scares the shit out of me. Mm. Like I'm going to go up and I'm going to speak in front of 200 people. And I've never given this speech. And the coolest thing is, is when I walk out there, you know, I, I really don't know how it's going to go. I don't even know how it's going to come off. I try to make it that way. Mm. And I tell the audience, hey, is it okay if I do something I've never done before? This might go awful or it might be epic. And some of you will remember this the rest of your life. Now, all of a sudden, what I've done is I've fully engaged the audience because they're like, this dude's an idiot. He's going to do something he's never done. And for me, I'm like, whoa, yeah, this just got real. And you just go, but it's such, it's frightening. It's exhilarating. And when mm -hmm. you're finished, that sense of accomplishment, when you walk off that stage, it's got to be the same thing. When you try to mm -hmm. play music, you don't really know. And like, when you get done, you're like, dude, we just nailed that. Yeah. Or you're just like, well, that's, that's where's the train that wreck? <laughs> <laughs> and that does happen, but that's, that's okay. Cause it still takes you, uh, it still takes you out of that place of being stressed. And it's funny that we're talking about this. Cause I've got this book on my, literally on my desk next to me. Cause I was, I was writing up some stuff about it. Uh, it's the conquest of happiness, which is an older book from the twenties by Bertrand Russell. And he, he's talking about stress and, uh, here we go. So he says, um, to a great extent, uh, fatigue and stress in those cases is due to worry, and worry could be prevented by a better philosophy of life and a little bit more mental discipline. Uh, most people are very deficient in control of their thoughts. They can't stop thinking and worrying about the topic at times when they can't do anything about it. And that really hit me hard because that that's been me. And, and of course I've struggled with, you know, fatigue issues and, and I don't, I, I kind of in your camp, I don't feel like I handle stress. Well, I don't really know how many people can honestly say they handle stress well, but I know a few, uh, and, and they've mastered that they've mastered that ability to be uh, more than a hundred percent into it when they're in problem solving mode, but then completely and strategically disengage and go do something else, something that takes their mind out of it and just have that mental discipline to kind of set it aside um, when they're not able to do something about it. And if you're an entrepreneur, that's a really, man, that's a hard line to draw because you feel like the, the more thought that you put into it, well, I'm going to get closer to solving that problem. It's like, but not if it's like that weird 30 or 40 or 50 percent of your mental capacity all you're doing is spinning your wheels and, and tiring yourself out with stress and worry you've got to like put everything you've got into it extremely intensely for like short bursts of time and then completely withdraw that's that was bertrand russell's secret to uh to dealing with stress 